snazzy stuff. Coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Let's see, how can we describe this Lincoln? Subtle, elegant. And this Duesenberg? Like uh, a tux that you would put on, you know, a gentleman would put on. Interesting. And this Auburn inspires the imagination. What yeah. parties has it been to? Parties? You know, that's the interesting part. Huh. Plus. Hey, Jeff, you missed the spot up there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. From paint booth to mirror finish in Under the Hood, do you love rare automobiles? Uh, I'm pretty well given up ever trying to find one. Then you'll love this. Cruisin', presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cruisin', presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, and we are at the Crawford Auto Museum in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. There are over 100 beautiful cars on display here at the Crawford Auto Museum. These aren't the type of cars you see at your neighborhood cruise in or out on the street on a beautiful sunny day. These are museum pieces. These are pieces of history. These are show cars that you just really do not see almost anywhere else. Unless you happen to get lucky, and unless you happen to know which car shows to attend. For instance, the Glenmore Gathering of Significant Automobiles in Canton, Ohio. This is the type of event that attracts major cars, museum type pieces from all around the United States of America. Lincoln made some beautiful cars, and this is one of them. This is about as sharp as you get, Brent. What, where did you find this car? I, I bought this car at auction uh, about four or five years ago, but uh, I knew the fellow who restored the car. It's, it's been known in the, in the circles of collector cars as the Rocky Romeo car, and, and that comes because uh, usually in the, in the history of these cars, there's some man that had a real passion for these cars, and Rocky had a passion for this car, and he restored this entire car the frame, the body, and everything uh, himself. And uh, that was uh, one of the reasons why I bought it, because he, he was so meticulous, did such a nice job. It's kind of cool that you knew the man who did it, too. Yes, I've been to his house, and uh, after I bought the car, I went to see him out. He's out in Ohio, and I went to see him, and uh, I got everything he had, pictures of the restoration, anything he got from the car. And as I went to leave uh, the house, one, uh, I said, Rocky, there's one thing you forgot to give me. Is this trophy on the on the on the mantle there, Pebble Beach uh, winner? Ah. <laughs> he said, "Oh, Brent, you can't have that." So we agreed that he is going to put that in uh, the will for me when uh, when the time is right, because he still got the Pebble Beach trophy, and it's quite an honor, I think, for him to have won first in class in Pebble Beach in this 33 Lincoln KB. Uh, it may not be the most fancy car, but it's an excellent representation of the Lincoln model: subtle, elegant and uh, with nice colors and good lines. What do you like most about this specific car brand? I like the fact that Rocky was able to uh, trace the ownership all the way to new in this car. And at one point, it was traded for a paint job on a house to a <laughs> painter. And the painter ended up sitting with the car in his garage for years and years. And then another guy got it, all with good intentions to restore the car. Restore the car. I asked you about the color of the paint. Factory? Yeah, he was very meticulous in wanting to do uh, the car as original as he could possibly do it, and he was able to find those colors when he started taking the car apart. He found these blue colors and the fender colors, and even the interior and the canvas, that tan canvas would be correct. The interior color was as, as close as he could get to original piece of material he found under the seat, so he, he was very authentic. And I think that's why he won his class in Pebble Beach, because his car was extremely authentic, and they're very you know, wanting to have perfectly authentic cars there. Well, you are obviously proud of it because you don't make the trip from Ontario to a car show in Ohio unless you want to show it off. No, that's true. It's a very rare car. There's maybe only four or five. There was 37 made, but not many exist today. There's probably four or five that are in, around the country today. Paul, most of the time when you see one of the great Woodies from the 40s, the wood has been replaced. This is original wood on your Ford? And it's, it's, it's unique too. Uh, the wood of this car is, is all original, and um, the car had uh, seasoned in a barn for many years. And, uh, seasoned, I like, I and, like uh, that. And seemingly, the, uh, it, it, it uh, promoted the wood. It, it uh, would survive. The metal, the metal work on the car definitely suffered from, uh, from, from the uh, elements. My dad was a, was a, was a neat guy. He, he liked metal work, and he, he enjoyed woodwork, so it seemed to, to uh, service both of those desires. Perfect fit. 
Ford and their uh, savvy of marketing, uh, they actually grew their own timbers, uh, as I understand, in Iron Mountain, Michigan, and uh, they harvested their own lumber, milled it, and then had their own uh, team of craftsmen hand build their bodies, and they, they kept all that work in-house rather than outsource it like some of the other companies did. And what did they do with the crates? Well, Ford, uh, as I understand, even way back in the days of the T's, uh, Ford would specify the wood used on skids and boxes and crating. And then once their products, and maybe they were metal products, arrived on those crates, they would disassemble the crates and then that, that wood was used in construction of their cars uh, for floors and, and uh, trunk supports and, and uh, things of that nature. So they. Nothing went to waste. Henry didn't miss a trick, did he? Absolutely. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about this car, Paul? Well, it's it, it's a very unique vehicle. Um, I uh, the car drives very nice. It's it's a pleasure to drive, and uh, obviously uh, the uh, connection with my father is uh, is the most important part of this car. I don't know what I like more: your fabulous Auburn or your fabulous outfits. <laughs> Thank have, you. We have fun with both. They we go do. hand in hand, don't we do. they? Yes. We have fun. Yeah. <laughs> what is it about this Auburn that you enjoy so much? Auburn, obviously, is such a fabulous car. This one is very special. Well, we saw this car about three years ago or four years ago, and the colors as much as anything. It's got three shades on it. Not very many of those cars had three shades on it. So that did. It's a 12-cylinder also, so that kind of excited us being a 12-cylinder. Where did you find this car? In Wisconsin. We first saw it advertised in a magazine and uh, we didn't actually see it till probably eight or ten months after that. So. Betsy, what is it about the styling of the Auburns that, that you guys enjoy so much? Oh, it's just a beautiful car. We, it, it was running, it was really done when we got it. I mean, it was already restored, but the running boards had a problem. So we did spend the first winter, took the running boards off and replaced them, which it took us all winter to do that because we wanted to do it just right, but that kind of made it our car after we did that, so that was fun. You know, it's, it's not too often that a family gets this into owning an automobile. Why, why, Betsy? Why do you guys love it so much? I've always liked cars. I've always liked cars. Every time we go to get a car, I keep saying, we don't need another car, we don't need another car. And then they put up the garage door and I say, make them an offer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've always liked cars. Well, I'm really glad you made an offer on this one because we're happy to have it in the show. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you having you. us. Thank you. <laughs> it's an unbelievable showpiece now. But at one time, hideous, for lack of a better word, <laughs> the top car from the Glenmore Gathering. Next, on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Dwayne, we were walking by, we looked at the front of the car and it said Curtis, and we all thought, what's a Curtis? We read the sign, it's one of 16 Curtis sports cars ever made? Correct, yes. Wow. Explain, what is a Curtis sports car? Frank Curtis built race cars. He built most of the Indy race cars, he built the midget race cars, etc. And he wanted to build a sports car and put all of the technology of a race car into the car. And this was the product. But the problem was that uh, he he was undercapitalized, so he was only able to build 16 cars before he was out of business, uh, at least out of, out of the sports car business. Not the race car business, but the sports car business. He turned a sports car into a race car, though. This one has some serious speed to it. Yes, it does. This uh, car set a land speed record on the Bonneville Salt Flats in 1949. This exact car? This car, yes. This exact car. It's driven by Wally Parks, who is the father of the National Hot Rod Association, the editor of Hot Rod Magazine and just, uh, he was just getting started back then, and they drove it 146 miles an hour. Where did you ever find this, Dwayne? And what's the story behind you wanting a Curtis? <laughs> well, about 20 years ago, I read an article about Curtis cars, sports cars, and I said, I want one. 
Well, try and find one. Yeah, yeah good, good luck. luck. <laughs> yeah. And so the years passed by, and uh, I've pretty well given up ever trying to find one. And one day a friend called me who was an automobile broker, and he said, you'll never guess what I just purchased. I says, what's that? He says, I just bought a Curtis sports car. And I said, Mark, I want it. And he says, well, okay, do you want to know how much it's going to cost you? And I said, yeah, but I still want it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, but yes, I do. <laughs> so he, uh, we worked out a deal, and uh, I, I bought it. What kind of shape was it in when you found it, and, and where, where did he find it? Well, it, it came out of uh, Iowa. It had been wrecked, and uh, people had tried to put it back together. They had done a very poor job, and it was basically a basket case when I got it. So I had to tear it down to the frame and start all over. Frank Curtis had wanted to use all Studebaker parts, and so he had a Studebaker uh, suspension, Studebaker differential, so on, and he was waiting for a V8 from Studebaker, but it didn't come forth. So then... He used a Ford engine. Well, people that were trying to restore it were trying to force all Ford parts on it because it had a Ford engine. Right. And it, they didn't fit. So when I got it, we had to start all over again, take everything off, start with the frame, and build it up from that. If the Studebaker part fit, great. If it didn't fit, we'd try a Ford part and then back and forth because there are no instructions. It's just trial and error. You had some help, though, putting it back together with people who knew Curtis pretty well. Yes, uh, two people in particular. Arlen Curtis, who was Frank Curtis's son, and who had driven this car when he was uh, a young man, a teenager and a young man, so he knew it. And also Wally Parks, the man who set the land speed record on the Bonneville Salt Flats. He still remembered the car, and both of them served as consultants when we restored it. Have you ever seen another one, Dwayne? I've seen uh, a couple of them. We've accounted for about four of them out of the 16. So I'm supposing that the remainder are probably either destroyed or they're, they're hiding, but I doubt if they are around still. And this is number one? This is number one. It uh, has the serial number KB003. 001 and 002 were prototypes which were destroyed. 03 is the first production car and, and uh, 16, uh, number one of 16. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You were looking for a needle in a haystack, and it's sitting behind you. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joseph, as stunning as Duesenbergs are, this might be the most stunning Duesenberg I've ever seen in my life. This is absolutely beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Where, where did you find this? When did you find this? And what was this project all about? I first knew about this car in 1996. It was in a collection uh, from a fellow up in Wisconsin, and uh, he had passed away, and his heirs put the, his collection uh, at auction with Sotheby's in New York. And I went to the auction in 1996 uh, and wasn't able to purchase the car at that time, and uh, I kept after the car. So about 10 years later, I finally was successful in, in purchasing the car from the individual that bought it at the Sotheby's auction. And what did it look like at that time? It was a complete car. It had been well taken care of. It had been restored in the 60s, and it was painted black and silver. Uh, and it had a rather um, hideous, for lack of a better word, <laughs> uh, interior. It's an honest word. Yeah, it, had a, it was this um, reddish-orange and beige-tan interior. Uh, so in, um, I bought it in late 2005, and then by mid-2006, we embarked on a two-year restoration. It's a very elegant car, and I wanted it to look elegant, and I wanted it to be like uh, a tux that you would put on, you know, a gentleman would put on. So it had to have that elegance to it, and that's why I went with a dark color. Um, it, it's a blue but it has what I call a little bit of um, eggplant. And in some, as you're photographing now, it may even look black, but that was by design. I want it to, to look black in the shade or when it's overcast, but at different angles, it takes on different shades, blues, purples, and the interior we did with the, with the gray mohair, and I think it complements it very well. I will say you scared me a little bit ago when you told me that you had it out on the tour yesterday and yep. had it moving a little bit. Yeah, It's a uh, supercharged 
car. It's a factory supercharged car. Duesenberg only made five closed original supercharged cars. They made a total of about 32 supercharged automobiles, factory supercharged. And out of the 32, only five were closed cars because naturally they would put the supercharged cars in the more sporty open cars. So it has a straight eight with the supercharger, it's 320 horsepower and has a top end of 100 miles an hour. And as I said, I had it up yesterday at about 75 and <laughs> my wife said to throttle it back because it, as I said, it didn't have, doesn't have seat belts or airbags. This car was made for Powell Crosley of Ohio. Uh, of Crosley Field and the Cincinnati Reds. Exactly. This was made for him. Uh, and there's actually a radio, because he had a radio company. He ordered the car with a radio. There's a radio in the rear. Uh, but this was, this was his car. Oh, probably. Yeah, the Cincinnati Reds. And, uh, exactly. Well, thanks for bringing it back to Ohio. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you. Let's make it shine. This is the last step before it gets buffed to its final finish. Fine finishes. Up next and under the hood. Cruise in, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. We'll be right back. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work, we do the marketing, we sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. One of the steps in a restoration process that gets everybody all excited is when you get that paint on the car. And hey, Mike Velick, the restoration manager here at RK Motors, it starts to look like what you're thinking it will. And this is the beginning of that process. Take us through what you guys do to take it from a regular paint job, Mike, to a pristine type of paint job. Okay. Well, here we've got Adam Gall working on wet sanding the fender out on this Monte Carlo. Just came out of the paint booth. Uh, and it looks good. Yeah, absolutely. It, it laid out very nice, but we want to take it to that extra level. And this is where somebody could save some money and do it themselves if they've got some patience, some time, and just a little bit of finesse. So what Adam's doing here is he's using pretty much what we do. It's a soap and water comp. We just put a little bit of soap in a bucket, Gives it a little bit of glide, a little bit of, it helps the paper bite, cuts nice and smooth. And that is very fine. That is a very paper. fine. What he's starting with is the process will go through, uses a hard block with thousand grit paper, which we have here. We'll go through a thousand grit to a 1500 grit to a 2000 grit. And just work your way up doing the whole car. Yes, and what that does is it's, the thousand grit will take away the majority of the orange peel any dirt nibs, anything of that matter. And the, the orange peel is that look that the paint has where it looks like looks the peel of an like orange. Like the peel of an orange. That comes out of a factory or any paper. Right, which would be acceptable for a factory repair, sure. but we want to go that extra mile. The 1500 grit then kind of just takes away 1000 grit scratches, the 2000 grit takes away the 1500 grit yep. scratches, and then we move on to a DA paper, which works just great. We take our DA, it's a thousand or it's three thousand grit, which as you can feel is very smooth. Yeah, that's, that's I think almost like padding. Your 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 fingers probably have more grit than this. <laughs> and finish it up to where it's ready for buffing. Okay, so here's here's after all said and done in a three thousand grit. This is the last step before it gets buffed to its final finish. And we left the section here so you can see it's very smooth. It's flat, it's ready to come to a shine as in this, and we'll let Sean show you how we can bring this right back to life in our final step right here. Sean, Sean Smith. Smith. Fire it up, Sean. And Mike, this is something you can tackle at home. Yes, absolutely. As long as you have the patience and go slow, this is very doable. And as you see, now this is the first step. What we'll do is we'll go through a, a heavy cut compound, which brings back the shine with a wool pad. Now we'll actually go through two more compounds and two more pads for this 
before it's final, and then hand glaze when it's done. And Mike, here we are at the last step, and this car doesn't even have any wax on it. This is just paint looking good, right? This is absolutely, this is through its third step, and uh, it's now being, getting its hand glaze, yep. and... Microfiber cloth. Microfiber and of course, cloth. Rip, rip off the tags. Absolutely, rip rule. that tag off. I'm gonna help you. And that'll work. Looks, looks really nice, fellas. Hey, Jeff, you missed a spot up there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to the Glenmore Gathering of Significant Automobiles on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Dennis, this is a beautifully done car. I love the colors, I love the look, and I love Cadillac. How long have you had this one? I've only had it about two years. It had the wrong colors on the car when I bought the car, so we decided we were going to just do a little scuff and painting, and it didn't kind of work out that way. We had a change body fits, and we had a lot, do a lot of work. When you got into it, what did you find you really had to do to it that you really wanted to change? Well, like I say, we were just gonna change the, uh, the gray color on the car. We were just gonna scuff the paint and paint it, it was a short job, you know. Then we found that all the body fits were terrible, and so we done a lot of work that we didn't really want to do, but if you're going to get into it and do all the work, you might as well do it the right way. Especially if you have a car that looks like this when you're finished. Yeah. V16, how much fun is that? I like in the V16, it's, it almost feels like you're driving a steam locomotive, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a different feeling, you know. It's, uh, uh, most cars, you give it the gas and the car responds. It seems like the V16s are kind of holding back and you just let it have a little gas and let it go where it wants to go. <laughs> and it takes you for the ride. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> no, they're great cars. You know, it's funny, I think you go all the way up into the 50s and owning a Cadillac really meant something. It was a know? big deal. But this was, you know, the, really the golden era, I would say. They worked on his car, the V16 engine, for oh, probably three or four years before they, you know, before they brought it out, and it was very ill timed with the depression, you know. So these cars really didn't. Uh, the first year they sold great, then after that they didn't sell hardly any. Some absolutely stunning, some extremely rare cars at the Glenmore Gathering of Significant Automobiles. If you're all excited and you want to see more, get here. The Crawford Auto Museum in downtown Cleveland, the Chrysler, the Cord, all kinds of fabulous automobiles on display. Over 100 museum pieces right here at the Crawford Auto Museum in downtown Cleveland. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.